Hello, hello. Uh, I'm back here in the great state of Utah, live in studio at Angel Studios. It's been a while. I think it's been almost a year since I've been here. Um, well, first of all, if you're case, <laughs> in case you're just stumbling across the internet and you have uh, and you don't know who I am, uh, I'm David Helling. I'm the creator of His Only Son, uh, and uh, and I am so excited to be able to dive into this live stream, a Good Friday live stream. What a privilege it is to be able to. Uh, to, to just sit here with you and talk about His Only Son and talk about this past year and, uh, and ultimately talk about the Lord and, uh, and the, the ultimate sacrifice of His Only Son for the sins of all those who believe. We got a big night uh, tonight. Uh, they've got a big list for me, a bunch of notes that, uh, to be honest, I wish I was a little better prepped for. Uh, but, uh, but hey, God's grace is proficient. Uh, his strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Um, so, here's a breakdown of what you're going to see tonight. Uh, first of all, I'm sure what the, the, the most exciting thing is there is a giveaway uh, that we're going to be doing, in, uh, a bundle giveaway, and you may have seen that. That might be why you're tuning in now. Uh, you may have seen that. So, yes, we have uh, the a DVD Blu-ray combo pack that will be given away. And do we have that here? Uh, oh, yes. Right, look at this right here. And look at this. Ah, oh, I don't know if this if anybody cares, but look, I actually signed in a silver marker right there. Um, so a signed DVD Blu-ray combo pack and uh, a black His Only Son t-shirt Wear it right here. I don't know why I'm holding it up if they have a picture right there. But this way you know it's real. It's actually a real shirt. And then, uh, and I don't, definitely don't know why I'm holding this one up, but the, the He Keeps His Promises hoodie. Um, which is very special, uh, and uh, I, I, I love this hoodie and the, the, the message on it. Uh, it's something that I always need to remember, um, and, uh, and, and so it's, a, um, it's something i got to preach to myself every day. Uh, so we've got that, and how do you win? What's your chance of, of winning this giveaway? Uh, it is uh, if you comment uh, on this live stream, comment your questions, your comments, uh, and I'm going to try to do my best to answer some of those questions toward the end of the live stream. And we will give the giveaway uh, to the winner at the very end. So stick around. Also, we have a uh, – we're going to go over some of the reactions because – so this is actually – this. His Only Son has now been free on the Angel app and on uh, angel.com slash sun. So across the Angel platform, it has been free for one week. And since then, I've been told, so in my notes, it says it's been seen. Well, actually, no, I don't give away that information yet. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to talk about some of the reactions uh, that, have, that have come in, uh, and we're going to see some of those reactions that have come in over the past week. And then we're going to do a, uh, a, a deep dive of sorts of it's into some of the, the scenes of the film, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this. We've got five scenes that we're going to look at, and I'm going to kind of talk through those, dive into the Word a bit, and um, I mean, what a day to be able to do that on Good Friday right here in Holy Week as we're looking uh, toward Easter Sunday, and hopefully it's uh, it's a blessing um, to to you to be able to go through this. And uh, and there we go. So that's, oh, and last but not least, see, I, I looked, and there's, there's actually two giveaways. We're also going to be giving away a collectible scene. And for those of you that have been that have been in the Angel Guild uh, for a while and have been a part of the Angel audience, you have heard plenty about the collectible scenes. It's actually, it's a, it's a super cool thing um, for, to just kind of be involved in your favorite uh, films, in particular, to be involved in His Only Son and kind of put your, your testimony ingrained permanently within the film. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to be giving that away. So that is, that is the live stream. Let's see if we can get through it. And let's begin this journey, shall we? First of all, even though I mentioned it last, we've got uh, the collectible scene that we will be giving away. Um, and uh, so if you want to know more about collectible scenes, you can go to, and what is that, uh, Mr. Micah? You go to angel.com slash collectibles, um, and that will tell you all about collectible scenes, how they work, uh, how you can how you can get one of those, and uh, it's really neat as far as you can you can purchase them for yourself or you can purchase them for others. You can write your testimony in it, um, and the winner of this collectible scene uh, is uh, I have I have read her testimony and um, and uh, it is it's it's precious, and 
it, it makes my heart sing, um, and just how the Lord has has used uh, his only son in her life. And, uh, and, and it, not that not, it's not about the film. The film just stands as a memorial stone of sorts to, to point people to the Lord and to God's word. And that is what gives the comfort and the hope. Um, and so the winner of this collectible scene is Miss Kelly Post. Um, and, uh, and I will be actually signing, uh, this collectible scene for her, Technology is a, is a, is an amazing thing. Um, I'm not sure. I, I know they they uh, they have me. Uh, they brought an iPad in for me to sign it, um, and uh, and 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 I'm going to be doing that after this live stream. And uh, and it's it's a privilege uh, to be able to do something like that. And so again, if you want to know more about collectible scenes, you go angel.com uh, angel.com slash collectibles, and uh, and so. Miss Kelly, um, thank you so much for for you that 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 sweet testimony, um, and you, your testimony sings of the proficiency of God's grace in your life, and and I hope, and I'm I'm confident that that he will continue to you know he's the author and finisher of our faith, and so the work that he began in you, he will see it through to completion. We know that. We know that for a fact because God's Word says that. Um, and, and, and it's, um, yes, so, so thank you, and, um, and I, hope, uh, I hope that His only Son, uh, and uh, it continues to be a blessing to you, and, and that stands as a, as that's, this collectible scene stands as a memorial of sorts on your wall or wherever you choose to hang it um, day after day, reminding you of, um, of God's provision that he is the God who provides and his provision in your life. Um, so thank you again, Miss Kelly, and, uh, and I look forward to signing that for you at the end of this, af- after this live stream. Um, and so next on our list of things to do tonight uh, is the, uh, the film re- reactions from the first week of it being free on the Angel app uh, or angel.com slash sun. So within the whole Angel Studios system, universe, whatever you want to call it, um, angel.com slash sun. Um, it has been free because of those that have paid it forward. Um, and thank you so much for everyone who have paid it forward and have made it possible for this to be free around the world, free to see and free to share. There's nothing that stands in the way of, of people receiving the message of His Only Son. And, um, and I already actually... Actually, uh, so my brand manager, Justin, he showed me a map earlier today of all the countries that it's been watched just this past week, and it is, it's incredible. I mean, truly, I mean, we are, we're called, the Lord commissioned his disciples and therefore commissions us to make disciples and to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth, and literally I've got this picture of the ends of the earth and the message of his only son, which ultimately is the gospel, is going out and being watched even as we speak, and being watched to the tune of, get this, over 80, and I think by now, it, so so just to show you how fast it's up to, when they printed this, it said over 71,000 people have watched it since it's been free, um, and uh, and I know earlier it was like, <laughs> earlier this afternoon, it was like 81,000, um, and uh, and it may very well be over 85,000, uh, Justin just told me before we began this, um, and so praise the Lord um, that, that, that this is uh, being seen now for free. There's nothing... There's nothing standing in the way, and uh, and ultimately we we thank the Lord and we praise the Lord. Without Him, none of this would be possible. But the Lord moving in your heart to pay it forward, um, uh, to allow it to be free for everyone. Um, thank you for you doing your part uh, in this, in taking this message around the world. Um, and so, uh, so do we have uh, some of the comments that have come in this this uh, this week so far? Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so Penny says, saw this and cried. It is beautiful. Uh, thank you, Penny. And uh, Giovanna, I, or Giovanna, I think it would be Giovanna, um, says, this film will definitely be an Easter tradition. That's really cool. Uh, for me, uh, took my entire family to watch it after Sunday service, and we had such a breakthrough. Praise be to God. Yes, amen. Praise God. And uh, that is uh, he, uh, he'll... Uh, Decky, oh, okay. I guess this is live, and so I, uh, <laughs> the pronunciation of that, I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce it, maybe not, this movie, 
Uh, so they say this movie had so many lessons in it about life and relationships, about our resolve and commitment to God. I suggest everyone see it. Yes, I hope that you continue to, to, to share it with your friends and your family. And uh, Christy wrote, uh, I so loved it. Thank you for making this film. What a great way to share the gospel. Amen. Um, may you be able to make more Bible stories in the films. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I hope that I can. This is, uh, this is definitely my heart cry, and as long as the Lord wills, I, I want to continue to be able to do it. And uh, so she says, highly recommended, in all caps. Um, well, thank you, Miss Christy. Um, thank you for recommending it to others. And Monica says, excellent movie. I watched this about 20 times. Well, goodness. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, not as many times as I've watched it, because when you're editing it, you watch it hundreds and hundreds of times. But 20 times, um, I, uh, and then she says, saw it in theaters three times. Wow, well, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, I tell everyone I know to watch it. Uh, well, thank you, Monica, for, for, uh, for taking time just to comment that encouragement. I love seeing those. Um, and uh, and to, just to mention, so those, are, those have come in uh, this week. As this has been free on the Angel app. Angel.com slash sun right there, yes. And, uh, and you can see it also on the Angel app. Um, and so please uh, continue to, uh, if you feel uh, so inclined, to share it with others. Um, and, uh, and may it continue to bless people and the Lord continue to work in it. It is a vessel, a vehicle uh, for the gospel, just like we all are. Um, we all are called, uh, those of us that are in Christ, are called to, to go out and, and, and share the gospel. Um, and, uh, and by God's grace, I've had the privilege of being able to steward Abraham's life and share the gospel in this way. Um, and so uh, yeah, I'm yeah, ab abundantly thankful. Um, but speaking of comments, remember, we have a giveaway at the end of the live stream. If you, if you, if you just stepped into this, we've got a giveaway bundle of DVD Blu-ray combo pack, uh, this hoodie, and also a black His Only Son t-shirt that we'll be giving away at the end of the live stream. Uh, uh, and we will select the winner from one of the comments on this live stream. So comment your questions, comment your your comments, um, and uh, and we will. Uh, I will do my best to answer some of those questions uh, uh, towards the end of the live stream. Once once uh, once the team has a chance to compile them, and uh, but so so that is that is the update on the uh, the app. And uh, we've also had some other uh, common questions uh, that have come in. I know uh, just in regard to his only son, um, and uh, and do we have any of those to put on the screen by chance? Because I know we have a couple here and uh and so we'll we'll get the comments later on um from uh, from what you're commenting currently but uh i know a lot of the frequently asked questions that i've seen many times is one are there any updates uh with the plans for the jacob movie well uh updates um well the update is it is currently the longest script I have ever written. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the with the biblical um, account of Jacob's life, oh, it's just so. By the way, maybe I should back up. So this is his only son live stream, right? Uh, his <laughs> the next film that I'm doing, Lord willing, by God's grace, is uh, is is a film over the whole life of Jacob from before he's born till after he died. Um, and, uh, and, and I spent a lot of time in Israel over 2023, both before and after October 7th, um, dwelling uh, with and doing time uh, with the descendants of Jacob in the land that God promised to Jacob and his descendants forever. Um, and uh, just the preciousness of those experiences, uh, not only not only with the, with the Jewish people, spending time with the Jewish people, but also going down way down south to Mitzvah Ramon in in the Negev in the south of Israel and spending time with the Bedouins, uh, <laughs> and me just me and a translator spending time with this Bedouin family, uh, uh, cooking pita with them how they how they cook pita, which is incredible uh and uh I mean, it, it's it's something like i've never seen before um and uh but it's best pita i ever had in my life and going out and and herding the goats with uh swillam who was the 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 bedouin who um who I, I spent time with, and uh, and he actually brought his family out, including his wife, which was a high honor. To so to see a shepherdess in action when I'm writing a film about 
a shepherdess. Uh, Jacob's wife, Rachel, we know, was a shepherdess. And how often do you get to see a shepherdess in real life in modern times? Um, but getting to see that, uh, the those experiences um, are going to add such a level of vibrancy uh, to this. To And I've, I already can see it in the script. But when the film is finished, I can't wait to to see the result of those experiences and, 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 to, and to share that with you. Um, it's uh, <laughs> including how they make the penis, because I've already got it in the script. Um, the way that I, I experienced the Bedouins making the penis, uh, uh, it's going to be included in the film. Uh, and uh, But yes, like I said, so Jacob is currently, it is the longest script I've ever written by far, and I don't want to miss a thing in his life. I want to be diligent about telling the account of his life the right way. And, uh, and so I appreciate your prayer, um, uh, your continued prayers uh, for, for me and this entire endeavor that I do it the right way. I don't want to miss the mark. I don't want to get ahead of the Lord. I want it to be all in his timing according to his will. Because uh, unless the Lord build, builds the house, they labor in vain, in vain those who build it, right? So, so it's, uh, I want to continue to seek the Lord and have clarity and discernment as to how I tell Jacob's life. Because, you know, the Lord has chosen to call himself time and time again all throughout Scripture the God of Jacob. And um, so I want to get it right. And, uh, and, and so that is, that's where I currently am with, uh, with, the, with the Jacob film. Um, we were talking with a lot of people as, as uh, uh, the potential of where we could potentially shoot this film. Um, and, uh, and yes, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, and just even, my goodness, the wrestling with God, whew, the, um, it's moving to me just writing and digging into how to visually represent that. Um, and, uh, yeah, can't wait to share it with you. So that is a little bit of an update on Jacob. I know we see a lot of comments that has to do have to uh, have to do with that. I know also another comment that we get, and I've answered this before a, a long time ago, actually a year ago. Um, and uh, actually, you know what? A year ago. Speaking of this, you know that today I saw this because it was like a, a Facebook reminder. Today, a year ago today, so the 29th um, of March. We had the world premiere of His Only Son. This is actually the exact one. Right now, right now, at this time, exactly a year ago, um, uh, I was at the theater, and we were at the red carpet doing the, the world premiere of His Only Son. And, and, and I could have never imagined every, I mean, not hitting number three in the U.S. box office, becoming number one in Lebanon, being in the, in the, in the, in the top ten of all watched content on Amazon Prime for, for weeks. Um, it's, um, it's, it's been an incredible ride, but the biggest thing is how it's impacted the hearts and seeing the testimony, um, like Miss Kelly's testimony, come out of that. That is to see that the Lord is working in it. It's so incredible, uh, the testimonies that have come out of this past year. But, um, but a year ago, uh, I did a, a Q&A or a, a kind of a yeah, question and answer with uh, with Nicola and Sarah, who plays Abraham and Sarah in the film. And, uh, and I did tackle this question, but a, a thing I see time and time again, even, even now, is, uh, is what are the markings on Sarah's face? And so if you're wondering that, let me tell you. Okay, so the, the markings are, are supposed to be tattoos. Uh, on Sarah's face, and the reason why I wanted to incorporate that is because we know, speaking of the Bedouins, um, that the Bedouins historically have tattooed their face in a similar way, going back for thousands of years. And it's actually, they know that it's it's pre-Islamic, and it's actually pre-Christian. So they have they have evidence of of the Bedouins doing that even before Christ. And you know what's what's amazing is going back even to the time of Abraham, four thousand years ago, in ancient Egypt they have they have exhumed mummies with tattoos not only on their face but all over their body, and we we know that people were tattooing themselves back then because whenever Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt after four hundred years of slavery, so this would have been about six hundred six hundred fifty years of the uh, uh, time after the call of Abraham, 
about about 600 years after the time of his only son, um, there there there's the Lord tells Moses as they're before they're going into the promised land that the people should not mark into their selves, into their skin for the sake of the ancestors. They aren't to tattoo themselves because that was a, a pagan ritual that was being done by the Canaanites and, and other cultures around that area at that time. And so I wanted to incorporate that to show um, it's very, I mean, it very well could have, could have been the case that, that, that Sarah was tattooed like that. Um, and, and, and so the, 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 um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, it's very well, she very well could have been tattooed like that. Um, and so I wanted to show that picture of that, um, uh, in, in, in Sarah so that every time Abraham after he's called from, because they were brought out of paganism, remember, and we're going to get into that in a minute in some of these in some of these scenes. They were brought out of paganism, and if Sarah was tattooed like that, um, then how poignant of a reminder would that be? Every time as Abraham and Sarah are having to walk out their faith, and as Abraham's faith is being tested for decades as they're waiting for the promised son. Um, he's faced with that reminder of the world that they came from. I thought it would be a, 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 a plausible um, uh, picture and a very poignant picture to demonstrate uh, the authenticity um, or to, to demonstrate the details of what was going on in that world at the time. So long-winded answer. I apologize if you fell asleep, but I do get that question a lot. So hopefully if you've had that question uh, you have uh, <laughs> you have um, you you've now got it answered and answered clearly, hopefully. Um, but uh, so that was I was told that that was the last question. That was my distraction. Uh, <laughs> so, and, uh, so that was why I was a little distracted because I was like, OK, that's how you know you're long winded when they tell you that it's the last question. OK, uh, so moving on. Uh, the uh, So let's. So how about we. Um, uh, we take a, a deep dive into some of these scenes, um, but before we do that, actually, I just want to remind you that if for those of you that are just stumbling across this thing on uh, on the internet, uh, then uh, we do have a giveaway bundle that's going to uh, that we're going to be giving away at the end of this live stream to someone who comments on this live stream. And that bundle includes a DVD Blu-ray. A uh, package uh, actually signed by me. This is actually it right here. Um, and uh, and and this he keeps his promises hoodie, um, uh, which I, I mean the the message is for everybody. And I love it as a um, just being able to bear as a testimony whenever you wear it, and and you can have conversations with people. Um, and uh, and also the the black his only son T-shirt. So a bundle of those three items will be given away at the very end of this live stream if we get there. Uh, and, and <laughs> uh, so next on the agenda, the breakdown of, of some of these, these scenes. So I just wanted to actually walk through um, some of the highlights. Uh, I, and they're, they're, they, some of my favorite scenes, some of my favorite scenes are in here. I have a lot of favorite scenes in the film. Um, but these are scenes that I thought were so timely to look at now today on Good Friday um, when uh, the Lord gave his only son for the sins of all those who would believe. Um, and, uh, and it is an event that happened on Good Friday that, that the Lord was, was setting up as a, as, as, a, as a picture in the lives of Abraham and Isaac, um, that was to echo through the generations of Abraham's descendants until 2,000 years later, the Lord would give his only son for the sins of all those who believe on the same hill. Uh, and we remember that on this Good Friday. So let's dive in without any further ado. Uh, let's dive into to these scenes. And uh, so can we pull that first scene up? Uh, and I will, I will be silent. You'll get to see this. And then when we come back in, I'm going to I'm going to kind of break it down a bit. Abraham, our good name, our home, our place at the temple. Everything has changed. I can no longer serve the gods of my father. This is blasphemy. You cannot blaspheme a lie. Then I don't say it. 
He has promised to make of me a great name, a great nation, that all the families of the earth will be blessed. A nation? Through. We haven't even a son. We will. How long have we tried? He will provide. He. He will make a way. Abram, you don't even know this God. How do you know this God is even good? How do you know he is even a God at all? Sarai. He is. There is no other God. How do you know this, Abram? I know. I know. I know. Yeah, so that is, um, I guess actually, what I should have said before this, um, if you haven't seen the movie, go to angel.com slash sun and watch it now because we're going to get into some spoilers. <laughs> so if, uh, so that right there, as you know, um, uh, and I'm sure you've seen the film because you're still watching right now, uh, is the first flashback that we see in the film. And it goes back, it looks back at, um, at Abraham. Uh, in Ur when he was called by the Lord and the Lord appeared to him for the first time in Ur. And, uh, and we see this account um, in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3. And I was going to read that here for you. Um, it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curses you. And in you, oh, I'm sorry, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so what that scene does there is, is it shows the immediate aftermath after the Lord met um, Abram at the time. His name was Abram. And, and told him to go. Now, remember, I mentioned Abraham and Sarah were brought out of paganism. It actually says in the book of Joshua that Abraham's father, Terah, was a, an idol worshiper. He worshiped idols. And, uh, and we see in this region that actually one of the main gods, Swin, and I'm actually going to get into that um, if you stay tuned for the next film, uh, into Jacob's life, um, and you kind of take a deeper dive into the culture where they actually came from, but they were moon worshipers. Uh, one of the where well, their chief god was God of the Moon, and uh, and the Lord met him, called him, plucked him out of paganism, and told him to go. And by faith Abraham went. And I love this because the Lord does that for those of us that are in Christ. The, lo the Lord does that to each and every one of us. He plucks us out of paganism, and he tells us to go. And by faith, we go and we make disciples. Uh, it says that Abraham, it says in Genesis 15, it says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The Lord accredited righteousness to Abraham's account because of Abraham's faith alone, because he believed God. And what we see there is, is, is the, the promise of that all the families of the earth would be blessed. And this is where we're going to get in, into these other scenes, that this promise of the blessing of Abraham wouldn't just be for Abraham's direct genetic descendants. It's a promise of blessing to all the nations. And that's what we're here commemorating on Good Friday. And we'll get to that as we continue to walk, work, uh, walk through and work through some of these scenes. Um, but, but if you'll see there at the end of the scene, at the end of the scene uh, when Sarah says, how do you know that he's even a God at all? And Abram, Abram says, he is. And I made sure when I was writing the script, I wanted to have that emphasis of he is because of what we see in Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. 
and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so I wanted to have that emphasis at this part. Abraham believes that he is. And to further illustrate that, if you notice at the very end, before it cuts back to the, to the main timeline of, of, the, of the film, when, when, Isaac is bringing, uh, when, when Abraham is bringing Isaac to Mount Moriah, Abram says, I know, I know, I know three times, and I wanted to, I wanted to, to emphasize that because of the triune nature of the one God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, believing who he is, that he is who he says he is. And so that declaration of Abraham's faith, I wanted to fully illustrate it like that. So that's just kind of a little Easter egg. Um, and you also see the, how the Lord's theme, and I've talked about this before previously in, in, in other live streams, but the Lord's theme in the score, you'll see it as a three-note theme. Dun, dun, dun. And we'll get to that here in a minute, um, actually, in the next scene. So listen for that, because it's dun, dun, dun. That, is, um, that is also to show the triune nature of the one true God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, three in one. Um, and, uh, and, and so, so anyway, that's, uh, that is, that's kind of a breakdown of that scene. But what I want you to hold on to is through him, through his seed, all the nations of the earth, all the families of the earth, it says in Genesis 12, would be blessed. Uh, and so with that, let's go to the next scene. Abram. Lord. To your descendants, I will give this land. Yeah, that's, um, you know, we talk about favorite scenes. Uh, for me, that one might be up there as one of my favorites. Uh, it's one definitely when editing it. I don't know why, well, I know why, um, but f I, I didn't foresee this being the case. But that scene, I shed more, t more tears watching that scene over and over as uh, editing it um, uh, with that scene than any other in the film. Uh, I don't know if that if that if if anybody else shares that same sentiment. Um, if so, you can comment, and then you'll be entered into the giveaway. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you if you share that same sentiment, um, because of well, I, I'll let you know why that is after I explain what what's happening here. So this account that we that this this moment in the film uh, is is hearkening back to also what we see in Genesis 12, where the Lord first met Abraham in the land, in the promised land. It was actually in Shechem at a place called Elon Moray, um, and, uh, and that's where the Lord first appeared to Abraham in the land, and he said, to your descendants, I will give this land. Now, that, yeah, and this is why, it, this is why it's so special for me, and not to make it self-centered or self-focused, but but we need those reminders that, uh, that, that he does keep his promises. And, and to think that the Lord, <laughs> through the Lord's purposes, the Lord pulling Abraham out of paganism, giving him a land, giving him descendants, giving him a seed, giving him a promise, so that through him would come the Son of God, through him would come the ultimate seed who, if you see in Genesis 3, who would crush the head of the serpent, um, the seed of the woman that would crush the head of the serpent. And he would suffer even though he was sinless and die and take on the sins of all those who would believe, including the sins of wretched David Helling. And I would be able to have life forever with my maker by his grace and mercy alone to see the implications of 
in the Lord's whole line of his redemptive plan and his divine providence, in that moment there, what the Lord was doing and what, the, what was going to come out of that promise to your descendants, I will give this land. Um, that, yeah, that, that deeply moved me. Um, and, but the, the picture of the dirt in the hand, it's also so special. So in Genesis 3, it doesn't say that the Lord did that. Um, but in Genesis 13, we see the promise of dust. Uh, and actually in Genesis 13, so after Genesis 12, you have, you have uh, Abram and Sarai, or Abraham and Sarah, and they go down with Lot and the rest of their families and their servants and their flocks, and they go down into Egypt because there was a famine in the land. And there's a whole debacle with Sarah going into the, going into the, uh, the, the um, brought into to Pharaoh's harem. Um, and, uh, and there's a whole thing you can go in there and read for yourself. And then they come back into the land, and they go all the way back up to Bethel. Uh, and Bethel uh, is is going to play a big part in not well in all scripture, um, but but a big part in the life of Jacob, uh, and, and that's where Jacob has his dream where he sees the ladder, the 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 stairway between heaven and earth, and the angels ascending and descending on that stairway, and the Lord promises Jacob there. Uh, uh, to, to, to ultimately that, that, that he would make him as the dust of the earth. The dust, you see that there. The dust of the earth, we see that in Genesis 28, if you want to go and check it out for yourself later. He makes him the dust of the earth, and he will go to the, to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, and the Lord would bring him back to the land, and that he would be with him until he fulfilled all that he told him. Um, and we see there's, there's almost in Genesis 28, if you, if you look at Genesis 28 and you compare it to Matthew 28, which is the great commission where the Lord Christ commissions his disciples and he says, go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's saying, go to the north, south, east, and west and I will be with you until I've done all that I have said. That's, it's, it's, it, there's there's a, a very clear similarity between the promise to Jacob and and Christ, the descendant of J- the ultimate descendant of Jacob, um, promising uh, the the promise that he makes to his disciples there. But so we see that picture of dust come out of uh, um, come out of Genesis 28. But we also before that. In the life of Abraham, in Genesis 13, he's also at Bethel when he returns back to the land, and uh, and 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 him and Lot have a his uh, his nephew Lot have have a debacle, and Lot goes off into Sodom. And if you're familiar with that, um, but then the Lord meets him in Genesis 13, verses beginning in verse 14, 14 through 16. I'll read that right here. It says, "And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward and eastward and westward for all the land which you see i give to you and your descendants forever and i will make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that if man could number the dust of the earth then your descendants also could be numbered that that descendants as the dust of the earth this picture of dust that the Lord equates with man. I mean, one, we're, we're created from the dust. And he says he's going to make the, des- the descendants of Abraham. And even he's going to make Jacob as the dust of the earth. Um, and the picture of dust, that motif, um, is, is so... Uh, the Lord holds on to that. Not only... And I love, I just, I love that shot. It's so... It, um, it's very moving to me. The picture, that's like all of his descendants going into... <laughs> Uh, the picture of of the the innumerable descendants that would come from from Abraham uh, by faith, and but that picture of dust we also see one of my favorite verses in Psalm 103, uh, and it's actually verse 13 and 14, and it says, "As a father pities his children, so does the Lord have compassion on all those who fear Him. He knows our frame; He remembers that we are dust. And all oh, do I need that reminder to be, to remember that." That the Lord knows, the Lord knows when I fall. The Lord knows that he made me out of dust. 
But praise the Lord that from the beginning of creation, the Lord has been in the business of taking the dirt and making it into his own image. That is, that is something that carries on. I <laughs> actually gave myself goosebumps um, because how powerful is that? So the dust of the earth. So I wanted to have that picture of the dust there. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and it, did, you, did you catch the, did you catch the, the motif, the, the, the sound of the music, the, 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 the triune chord? Dun, dun, dun. So now when you see the movie, listen for that because it's all throughout. And, uh, and it just declares the true nature of the Lord. Um, but anyway, on that note, let's move on to the next scene. No longer shall you be called Abram. Abraham shall be your name. For I have made you a father of many nations. As for your wife, no longer shall you call her Sarai. Sarah shall be her name. She shall be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. I will bless her indeed. Your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name Father. Isaac. Father, are you all right? I will confirm my covenant with him as a permanent covenant. How right, my son. How right. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's another good one. Um, I uh, just the the comforting nature of the Lord um, in that moment right there in Abraham's life. Now, now that, that flashback, so you know in the film right there, you're kind of jumping back and forth in time as, as um, I know that wasn't everybody's favorite way of telling the story. <laughs> I've heard that in the comments. They're like, why so many flashbacks? Well, the film was, was built like that, um, and uh, it's unique to his only son. Jacob will also have some flashbacks, but it'll be a different structure. Uh, so sneak peek, there you go. But um, this is, we see this in, in Genesis 17, uh, this, the, the, the part where the Lord is saying this to Abraham, that he's changing Abram and Sarai's name to Abraham and Sarah, and he's promising explicitly that, that his seed, that his son that he would bear would be Isaac, and through him the promise would come that he names Isaac by name. And so this had to have been the promise that Abraham was hanging on to, knowing it says, it says in, in Hebrews 11 that, that by faith Abraham laid down his only son, believing that God had the power to raise the dead. Um, so, so he knew that if he were to even kill his son, the Lord would have to raise him back up again because the Lord promised to bring the promised seed through Isaac. Isaac. He named him by name, and being the Lord promises, the, Abraham knew that God keeps his promises. Uh, and so this, this had to have been something that, the, that Abraham was holding on to on that three-day journey. But something else I wanted to point out here was, was the new identity that he gives to Abraham and Sarah. He changes their name. He changes their identity. And this, this example of what the Lord does in all of our lives, he gives us a new name. So in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. We are a whole new life in Christ. And this picture is not something that just came in the New Testament. This is a picture that goes back to the very beginning of our faith in the life of Abraham. And because, because, you know, if you really think about this, and I have a, an Orthodox Jewish friend that was, that was telling me this, um, and it's actually very poignant, you know, because, because Abram and Sarai could not have kids. But by God's grace, Abraham and Sarah could. So the Lord changed their nature, and then they can do all things through him, strengthens them. Now, I've just kind of 
hodgepodging uh, scripture, but I, 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 I don't think that's too far-fetched because that's how the Lord works. The Lord has always worked the same way, and you can even go back to Genesis 6 and see in Noah's life that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and because of that, the Lord preserved Noah and his family through the flood. So all of mankind from the beginning were saved by grace. Uh, and so, but the, the new name that he gives Abraham and Sarah, I just wanted to read it. So you see in, in, in Isaiah 62, you see Jerusalem gets a new name. But in Isaiah 56, I wanted to, sh- I wanted to read this because this is so poignant as far as the name, the renaming that he gives, that he gives all of us. The name that, that, that he himself gives to us by grace. Um, you have a picture of this in Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 5. So bear with me as I read this, because um, this is so beautiful, and it gives hope to all of us. Regardless of if you feel inadequate, if you feel hopeless, if you feel like you are being swallowed up by your sin, the Lord's mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever, and through Christ, because of Christ, because of the death, burial, and resurrection of the only Son and his defeating of death and sin, we now have a new name. We can have a new name by faith alone in the finished work of Christ alone. And get this, in this picture that we see in uh, Isaiah 56, verse 1 through 5, says, Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, Here I am. A dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, even to them I will give, it, uh, I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. That is, that is awesome. A eunuch, it's in, in Deuteronomy 23, a eunuch, we see they, weren't even, they couldn't even be in the assembly. They couldn't go into the house of God. But the Lord makes this declaration that he's going to give them a full new identity. And if you know, I, 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 we're live to, to, to friends and family, so I won't get into it. But, but you know the, 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 the phrasing that the Lord chooses there that he will give them, and he's speaking to the eunuch who was cut off from the assembly, the eunuch would be given a name that could not be cut off, an everlasting name, and they would be brought in better than sons and daughters. That is, that is just so precious. Uh, the, 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 so the renaming that we see in Genesis 17 and we'll see that also in the life of Jacob, and this is really going to be a big deal in the life of Jacob. Um, the, the, the renaming him from Jacob to Israel, he gives him a new name. Uh, that is something that the Lord has always purposed to do for his people, um, and it's by his grace alone. Uh, and, uh, and it says even like the eunuchs, they, they says that those who keep my Sabbaths, what do we see? We see in, in where is it in, uh, and I've got it right here. Yes, we see it in Hebrews. I actually don't have it. Oh, yes, I see it in, uh, in Hebrews 4. Um, and uh, so I'm going from my Bible here, and I've also got my notes. For the sake of time, I'm not turning back and forth everywhere. But, uh, but in Hebrews 4, if you go and read that chapter, we see that ultimately... Christ is our Sabbath rest. Um, and so the, the picture of them keeping his Sabbath, his ultimate Sabbath, is Christ. That's not lost on the Lord. Um, and so, so that picture that we see there of them renaming um, and that they, would be a, that they would be a father and a mother of nations. Again, this promise of nations through their family, all, all the families of the earth, and we'll get later in the, next, uh, in the two scenes from now, all the, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so those that in, in Galatians, we see that those that are of faith, 
are the descendants of Abraham. They're in, they were brought in by faith to the household, the family of Abraham. So uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this because this is a blessing to me. And here on this Good Friday, um, what better time to reflect on the promises of God and how the Lord so providentially provided and worked in Abraham's life and the blessing that it provides to all of us today and in the picture that that, that, that was on Good Friday. Um, and again, Remember, you can add your comments and your questions below. We'll get to those here in a minute, um, and uh, and you will be entered into your chance uh, into, uh, into into winning this uh, this bundle. Um, but uh, Mr. Micah, let's go with that next scene. My Lord Abraham. Father? I'm here, my son. We have the fire, the wood, but... Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Your son. Your son is here. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. That uh, <laughs> I wonder. We see that that's from Genesis 22, which is the main, um, the main account, the, the, well, the account that his only son is mainly based upon. When the Lord takes Isaac, I mean, when when Abraham takes Isaac to Mount Moriah on that three day journey, um, I wonder if Abraham knew what he was saying in that moment of God Himself would provide a lamb. I wonder if he did. I think later he did. Uh, but in that moment, um, I wonder if he actually knew that the Lord would provide a lamb and what the implications of that was, the ultimate implications, which we're going to get to after the next, after the next scene. Um, but, but the picture of that there, because um, Abraham really said that. He said that as Isaac, the son, carried the wood of the sacrifice up Mount Moriah, um, and uh, and that picture right there, look at that that that, you know, because this is go so back up a second, Micah, right a little bit more. Can you do that right there? Okay, now that's not um, actually it's the shot before this. It's in the film, so that's if you look at it, that picture. So you can pause there, of Isaac. So carrying the wood, and I wanted to illustrate this all the more because so many times. In visual representations of, of Abraham and Isaac, you see like paintings throughout history. You see Isaac as one, this little boy, but he's carrying this little bundle of sticks. But it says at the beginning of Genesis 22 that Abraham split the wood. If you look at that Hebrew word, he split the wood. And so that means that it was not little twigs. It was wood beams that were split. And so when he put the wood onto Isaac's back... Isaac had to have been carrying it like that. And what does that look like? Spoiler alert, it's, it looks like a cross. Um, and I wanted to further send that home by having the wound on Isaac's, on Isaac's forehead to, to mimic a crown of thorns. Uh, and you see that there. So his forehead is, is bleeding. But what's amazing here, so just hold right here, Micah. Um, and I don't know if the Lord intended this. Um, so this is just a Davidism. Uh, but we know that Abraham went up the hill, so the father took the son up the hill, and the son was carrying the wood of the offering up the hill, and Abraham was carrying the fire. And so going up Mount Moriah, going back to the triunity of God, you have a picture of the father, the son, and the flame, which so often in Scripture the flame is, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. You see the pillar of, of fire that leads the children of Israel through the wilderness at night. Um, you have the, the tongues, the flames above the, the disciples at Pentecost that were like tongues of fire. So you've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit pictured right there 
at this moment in history before the Lord made Abraham a nation that that would that would this picture that was going to echo through 2000 years until the Lord was going to give his only son on the same hill I just I I think that's really that's really special um I mean, it's there right in Scripture. So, so if the Lord was meaning that as a picture of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, you can you can uh, you can get you can make what you want of that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So this this the promise of the Lamb, the Lord would provide a Lamb, and with that, let's go to the next scene, the final scene. Nothing to him. Now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. What happened? He has spared you. The Lord has spared you. in this place here and the mount of the Lord it shall be provided by myself I have sworn because you have not withheld your son your only son in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed Good Friday. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's what it's all about. Good Friday, and, and uh, man, praise the Lord that we can reflect on His Word, His promise, and uh, and just what He was doing in the life of Abraham, and how much it is a blessing to us, the nations, 
all the nations to this day. Um, man, just thinking about that, even what Justin showed me earlier, um, what I mentioned earlier in the show of across the world, all the countries that have, that have seen his only son just this week for free on the Angel app. Um, so there's a lot in this. Obviously, that was a longer one. Um, and I know we're running short on time. So uh, I'm typically long-winded. Uh, so let's see how fast we can go with this. Um, but if you go, actually, at the beginning of this scene, <laughs> there's a bunch of flashes there. And I, just a little cool tidbit. There's actually um, a hint towards Jacob there in the flashes. Um, if you back up, so Micah, just kind of scrub along. It's the, it's the, there's a moment with the star. So you'll see there is a back of, and it's actually Abraham, but I, I, it could be also Jacob. Um, but, but, and you, you see real quick that star. Okay. So that star right there, there is a, uh, Balaam in number 24 is a prophet. I'll, I'm not going to go into all that, but he is a, he's a pagan prophet um, that go and he's paid to curse the children of Israel before they're going into the, the land of promise. But he can't curse them. He can only bless them. And he has this prophecy that a star would rise out of Jacob, a scepter out of Israel. Um, now, the, the, the star that would rise out of Jacob, that star is the Messiah. That star, ultimately, we know is Christ. Um, and that's why the Magi, the three kings uh, who came to see, um, who came to see uh, Christ um, after his birth, well, re re what, depends upon where you want to put that, he would have been two years old at the time, but came from the east because they, and it's believed that it's because of this prophecy, that they knew of this prophecy, and they saw his star and came to him. And a lot of times, you know, what's amazing is, <laughs> there's a whole other thing you can get into as far as the star. Um, the star is the star of Messiah. Um, the nation of Israel has the star of David on their flag as a banner that flies around the world. <laughs> banner, you can look in Isaiah 11 uh, to, to kind of get where that word is. Um, that, that picture is of uh, the, 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 that's from the star that would rise out of Jacob. Um, it's called the Star of David sometimes, but ultimately it's the Star of Messiah, which we know is the Star of Christ. So anytime you see that flag, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful picture. I'll leave it at that. So anyway, so that's a picture of Jacob, uh, but that's a little side note. So also in those flashes, go back to it, Micah, you have the, the death. So I, I wanted to make sure to highlight the death, burial, and resurrection. So you've got Isaac burning on the altar. So he's carrying the lamb there. And you've got Isaac burning on the altar, Sarah screaming as if he were dead, and then the resurrection. So did you catch that? I mean, I'm sure you did. That's the open tomb. If you haven't, that's, that's, a, that's, that's foretelling uh, Christ. Um, and also, if you listen really good, you hear a trumpet. That's actually the sound of a shofar. Um, which is which is what what the uh, what the what Israel would blow at the temple. They would blow when they were walking around Jericho. They would definitely when it says trumpet, um, it's talking about the shofar, which is the ram's horn, and the ram's horn comes from the ram caught in a thicket, and they blow it every year. It, they blow it at Rosh Hashanah. The Jewish people, even to this day, that's the Jewish New Year. They blow this trumpet at Rosh Hashanah, and they read the account of, of the Akedah, of the binding of Isaac, of Genesis 22. Um, but, but I, so, so that's where the shofar ultimately comes from, is that ram caught in the thicket. But they blow it for repentance, for freedom, but ultimately we see in Scripture where? In 1 Thessalonians 4 and in 1 Corinthians 15, we see that at the last trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise. So ultimately, at the last trumpet will be the ultimate resurrection that we can all hope in, those of us that are in Christ. And so that's just a little, a little Easter egg there. I, I like to try to... The, the film's full of those, but since we're on this moment, I wanted to, to show that there. Um, and then, so also, you have the ram. The ram 
that is caught in the thicket behind Abraham. Um, and a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, see, in the previous scene we looked at, he said the Lord would provide a lamb for the offering, and there was a ram. And it's like, well, see, the Lord provided, and there you go. He said it would be in that. But actually, that's a ram. That's not a lamb. It's, it's a different English word, but it's also a different Hebrew word as well, uh, interestingly enough. And uh, we get a sense that Abraham must have been expecting something more because of what he says next. He says, the Lord will provide. He names the place. He names the place, uh, the Lord will provide. And Moses, who's writing the account of Genesis by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, therefore it said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. So Moses is doubling down. Like six centuries later, he's doubling down on the future tense, the future nature of the provision of the Lord. So Abraham had to have been looking to something more. And so it's like, I wonder had, what had to have been going through Abraham's mind. Did he know what the Lord was going to do on that same hill 2,000 years later? Uh, the Lord definitely knew. And, uh, and maybe, the, maybe Abraham was speaking. He didn't, even, he didn't even know what he was speaking. And so the Lord would provide. And what would he provide? He says, he, he, the Lord says, in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. There's that, 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 that promise again that we saw at the beginning of these scenes and in Genesis 12, at the beginning of Abraham's call, that all the families of the earth would be blessed through him, through his seed, through the one who would come through Isaac. And who is that? That's who's right there hanging on that cross on Good Friday 2,000 years ago. The ultimate son, the only son of God, given up on Mount Moriah for the sins of all those who would believe and what's so poignant there in that moment, the Roman centurion, is, uh, it's very special to me. Um, we see in Matthew 3, so, so this, this he, says, he says, truly this man was the Son of God. You see that in, uh, at the end of, of the Gospel of Matthew. But at the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, we have the Lord God the Father himself declaring at Christ's baptism says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He makes the declaration that Christ is the son of God. And then what happens right on the back of that Matthew 4? He goes into the wilderness. He's being led up by the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And what, is the, what does the devil say to him? If you are the son of God. Let's start criticizing. Let's, let, let's start breaking that down. And then we flash forward to the end of the gospel of Matthew and Christ at his trial is standing before Caiaphas, the high priest, and Caiaphas asks if he is the son of God. And Christ says, you have said it. And Caiaphas rips his garments because he believes he's, he's being blasphemous. And ultimately the Lord is crucified because of that. And what happens? The earth shakes. The Lord gives up his life. But before that, he said, right before he gives up his life, he says, it is finished. He gives up his life. The earth quakes. The veil of the temple is torn in two, making a way for everyone. The Lord has made an access for everyone who believes to approach the Father because we're no longer clothed in our sin because our sin was put on the cross with Christ. He took our sins on himself, and we are covered in his righteousness as if we are holy, 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 and we can approach the holy of holies because of his sacrifice, because it is finished. And the next thing that happens is this Roman centurion, a picture of all the nations of the earth, makes the declaration that truly this man was the son of God. And therefore, from that moment on and on until today, all the nations of the earth are blessed because of that, because of the ultimate seed, seed of Abraham, the ultimate son, his only son that was given up on Mount Moriah 2,000 years ago, this Good Friday. This is what we remember today. Um, and if you believe that, it says in Romans 10, uh, that if you believe, if you confess with your mouth 
that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe that, then you can have life. You can be given a new name, an eternal name, made better than a son and a daughter, a name that will never be cut off. And you get to be in the household of God forever, adopted as a son or a daughter. Do you believe that? I hope you do. And I hope that, that uh, now you're able to watch this film with, uh, with even more insight. And uh, there's so many other... One day, I'm going to do a commentary on, the, uh, and, uh, on, on, this, on this film. Uh, uh, I hope I'd like to do a commentary uh, track on the, all the little Easter eggs that I have in there. But, um, but uh, thank you for, for sitting with me as we walk through this. There is still a giveaway. We've been collecting comments. I heard that we have some, and hopefully we have time to get to them. But real quick, hey, let me, let me pray for you real fast. And, and uh, I just want to thank the Lord for this time. And uh, dear Father, Lord, I just, I just thank you um, for what you did, what you did in the calling of Abraham, what you did in the making of a nation, what you did in the promise of that land, what you did in giving your son, your only son, on that mountain, 2,000 years ago for the sins of all those who believe that, that I can be blessed with life and a new name in you. Lord, I pray that you would have this truth resonate in the hearts of everyone watching, that it would be an encouragement. If anyone doesn't believe that, Lord, I pray that you would give them eyes to see and a mind and a heart to understand, to believe, to have faith, that they could, they could have righteousness according to their belief, like you did for Abraham, as it says in Genesis 15. Lord, I pray that this, this, this Easter weekend, that we look forward to, your, to, to, to what you did in raising your only son from the dead and making that declaration that death is defeated for all who believe in him. I pray that, uh, that we, would, we would walk through this weekend and, and on, uh, on into the days and the years to come with a, a heart just full of thankfulness to you and what you did, Lord. Thank you uh, for this time. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so, Mr. Micah, do we have any questions? Okay, question. So Zara uh, uh, says, question, thank you so much for your time. I'm wondering why this story now. What was your process in developing the story for the... Do we have the bottom of that question? Uh, the story for the screen. Okay. Ah, technology. I just heard it, it was the screen. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to, and I, I've touched on this before, but for, uh, for Zara and if those of you that don't know this, um, throughout my time in film school after the Marine Corps and, and desiring to do biblical films because my time in Iraq and the Lord getting my hold of my heart over there, in film school, I went to film school in San Francisco, and I and I went to film school with the with the focus of doing biblical films. So that created a lot of really good uh, conversations. And in those conversations with my non-believing friends, um, this account was one of the most common points of contention of why people didn't believe. I'm not going to believe in a God who tells a man to sacrifice his own son. You can have that. And so I thought, wow, you know, I wanted to illustrate this and really get to the heart of what the Lord was doing in Abraham's life and what the Lord was pointing to and what that means for us. Um, and, uh, and, and by God's grace, maybe the Lord could use this illustration to answer the scoffers and the skeptics and by God's grace, give them a heart to believe the truth of what the Lord was doing there 4,000 years ago and what it pointed to 2,000 years ago and how it can give life to you today. Uh, so that's why I did that, Miss Sarah. Um, or I, I don't know if that was Miss Zara. It sounds, sorry if you're a mister. Uh, I apologize. Uh, but uh, this is live. So um, now, do we have another question, Mr. Micah? How long did it take you to cast the actors? Whoo, that was so, um, that was actually months on end. Um, and we started casting some of, the, some of the actors, some of the roles we cast are really quick. I think actually the first one I cast was, uh, was, was Eshkalam. Uh, and then the second was uh, Sarah. And, uh, and, you know, Abraham, the role of Abraham, that was just, 
the Lord's grace. Actually, there's a there's a there's a I believe there was a testimony, uh, or I, I shared the story about that, and it's actually on a Q and A that you'll find on the Angel app a more detailed test or um, uh, account of of how the casting of Abraham actually happened. So you can go on the Angel app uh, and and check that out. It's in a Q and A with me and Neil Harmon um, that we did before the movie actually came out a year ago. Um, but uh, but it took a number of months, and you know we were supposed to shoot the film. In the fall, in November, December of 2018, uh, and we had to push because of weather and actor conflicts. We had to push to the summer of 2019, and and because we had to push, we actually lost the actor who was going to play Isaac. And uh, and you know the, the Lord graciously blessed us with Idan Moskowitz, um, who is a literal descendant of Isaac to play the role of Isaac. So you know the Lord. You, sometimes you don't know what you, you think. Things are, are hard or, 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 or hang-ups or hiccups, and the Lord uses it for the good of all uh, who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28 says that. So um, that was just a testimony of that. It worked out even better. So, Mr. Micah, do we have time for another question? No, no, no. Okay, so no more time for questions. And this is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Uh, you've heard me jabber on enough, and so thank you for sticking with me throughout this live stream. This has really been a blessing to me, truly, uh, to be able to walk through this, and um, and uh, hopefully it, it's bl it's blessed you this Easter weekend and on this Good Friday. But without any further ado, let us see who won the bundle of the Blu-ray signed, uh, the sweatshirt he keeps his promises, and the black T-shirt, the black his only son T-shirt. And, Micah, do we have that name to put on the screen? All right, Susan Sweeney. Uh, okay, and her comment is, seeing Abraham's love for his son and his obedience to God, the depiction was done very well, and I know my heart was pulled. Abraham's faith was shown very well. Well, thank you for that kind comment. And, um, you know, Abraham's faith is, uh, is, is a picture of, uh, of all of our faith. In, uh, and uh, really in, in all of our faith, because, because Abraham's faith was, was God-given, um, and, uh, and, and it, just like all of our faith is God-given. So I'm glad, uh, I, thank you um, for your comment, uh, Miss Susan, and we will email you and get your uh, contact information and, uh, or the, uh, your address or however uh, the team does that. Uh, they're, the, they're the whizzes with all that kind of stuff um, to get this bundle to you. Um, so thank you for participating in the comments. Thank you, everyone who commented. Um, I'm looking forward to going and uh, seeing the comments for myself. Uh, and uh, and yes, yeah, so thank you, hey, for, for this year, this year that commemorate the year of, of that His Only Son has been out in the week now that it's been out for free on the Angel app, on angel.com slash sun. You can see it for free. It's free to see. It's free to share. Uh, hopefully it does become an Easter tradition for you and your family. You know, we grew up, and I think it actually still happens, in the Ten Commandments was was on every year on TV for, for Easter, and, uh, and, and I hope that, that the Lord uses this in the same way. Uh, and, uh, but, hey, I hope that you have a blessed Easter. I hope that the Lord uh, glorifies himself, continues to do that with the film of His Only Son, and with each and every one of our lives. You know, he has made us for a purpose. And if this film reminds you of anything or causes you to remember anything, it's that the trials of our life, if we are in Christ, the discipline of the Lord is for the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And if you are going through a hard time and your faith is put in Christ and your faith is put in the Lord and his word, then you can know that this trial and this discipline is for your good and the Lord is going to use it because he says he's gonna, it's for the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And if there's fruit that comes out of that, that means that there's a tomorrow for the fruit to be worked out for others so that you can comfort others with the comfort by which you've been comforted by God. Hey, God bless you. Uh, may the Lord continue to glorify himself in everything that we do. Happy Easter. Thank you.